What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be on different search patterns for the real world. Now this video comes by special request by one of our viewers, a Melvin Moy, or Moi, if you will, asked if I could make a video on realistic search patterns and some little tips and tricks that'll help that's not necessarily in the training manual for a search and recovery class, whatever class you took, whatever agency you learned from. And so what I thought I'd do today is talk about two of the main types of search patterns I use based off the geographical location of where I'm at and usually what I'm searching for. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things you need to understand as far as what's underneath the water that can hinder that search and then I'm going to show you some of the tools that I personally use when I conduct a search whether it's with a team search scenario or even a solo search scenario which I do quite a bit. So taking a quick look real quick, um, this situation here is very common if you're searching from land or you're searching off a dock, something like that. And then this is going to be more of an open water based search where you're out, say, the center of the lake, center of the ocean, something like that. And so we're going to look at each one. I'm going to talk about the different search patterns that I'd use. And then I'll kind of show you some tips and tricks and what tools I use for both team-based searches and for solo search scenarios. Now, in this first situation here, we're very close to shore. We've got the surface up here. We've got some type of drop-off. And then we're going to have a flat level bottom. Um, this is very common around docks if you're searching around a marina area or maybe just off somebody's beachfront. Uh, and what, what makes it co so common, you're going to have a really sh shallow area, if you will, the surf zone, if you will, and then you're going to have some type of drop off and then it's going to level back off. And like I said, this is common around docks, marina, something like that. Um, and if you're searching this area, some of the things that you got to take into consideration is what is the contour of the bottom? Are you going to have that sloping edge or is it just going to be a straight drop off versus a, um, a diagonal drop off? And what search pattern is going to work best for you? Now, for me personally, anytime that I'm dealing with some type of incline, whether it's a vertical wall or even a diagonal incline, I like the jack stay search the best. And I'll show you an example here in a little bit of exactly how you set up a jack stay search. But the reason I choose a jack stay for that scenario and what I really like about it is, is for decompression purposes. We always know that we want to go to our deepest dive first. And a jack stay will actually allow me to search the deepest part first and work my way up the incline. Even if the search area, if you will, is going to encompass both the bottom itself and the incline of the contour, I can search a jack stay and not jeopardize any type of decompression illness or decompression sickness simply because I'm going up and down, up and down. I can always start at my lowest point, search that incline all the way up doing a jack stay. Once again, I'll break down a jack stay for you here shortly and show you exactly how to set up for it. Now over here on the other side, this is just basically an open water environment. You don't have any inclines. It's a steady bottom, meaning it's a consistent depth no matter what. Uh, and there's several search patterns that I use. And once again, I'll break each one down and kind of show you how, how I conduct each search. Of course, the circle and the sweep search is probably by far the most uh, productive, if you will. That being said, as long as there's not a lot of debris that you can get caught up in, the circle search and the sweep search is very consistent as far as how you search. Uh, you can do this with one or two p people or two divers, and I'll show you exactly how to do that as well. Of course, you can also do a U-shape pattern. This is where you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you're moving over a few feet each time. Depending on your visibility is going to determine how far you move over. And then, of course, any type of navigational search, whether you're using a compass, uh, natural bottom contours, or natural navigation, that works well uh, in this scenario as well. So depending on whether I have an incline here, or just an open bottom, that's really going to determine what type of search I do. Now, a couple other variables that we need to discuss is depth. Depends on how deep you are searching is going to depend how big your search area is. Uh, whatever your depth is and that object sinking, that's also going to be your search radius. If it's a 20-foot depth where you're searching, you're going to have a 20-foot radius that you're going to have to search from your downline or from your reference line uh, to hopefully find that object. Some other things, of course, is current. What type of current are you searching in? Because you know we want to always start that search going into the current 
uh, fighting against it, if you will, and towards the end of the current, it'll push you back to your exit point, just like you would in a drift dive scenario. Uh, visibility makes a big difference. What type of lights are you going to take with you? Uh, I prefer lights that either mount to my hand or mount to my mask, simply because it's less I got to put in my hand that I can, you know, I can use my hands to hold on ropes and everything else. But all those variables being said, these are the two different types of situations that I typically search in on a day in, day out basis. Uh, I'll probably do two, three searches a week and, you know, probably more than a hundred in a year's time. But these are the two that I deal with, especially here in our local lake. Uh, or even our local environment, whether I'm searching for bodies for a local public safety team, whether I'm searching for somebody's sunglasses they dropped off a dock, or whether I'm looking for a, a boat that's went under, uh, which we do quite regularly as well. Um, these are the two types of scenarios that I'm in pretty much weekly. And like I said, if it's an incline-based search, of course, the jack stay. Once again, I'm going to show you how to set that up. And of course, if it's a, just an open environment search, either the circle of sweeps probably going to be the most productive as far as is getting it done quickly but thoroughly. Uh, the U-shape search works really well and of course the navigational search where you use a compass or natural navigation works quite as well. So let's break each one of these down and I'll show you some tools on exactly how you can do it consistently every single time even if you're searching by yourself. All right guys, so first of all, let's look at the jack stay real quick. The jack stay is very easy to set up. And like I said, just as a reminder, I set the jack stay up anytime that I'm gonna be searching an incline simply based off my decompression profile, if you will. The jack stay is very simple to set up. All you need is a predetermined length of rope. A 20 foot section is usually a decent length depending on how big of an area you're searching. And I just use plain old braided rope here. It works really well. Um, floating rope's gonna work okay as long as you get it taut enough that it's not gonna be floating up, creating an entanglement hazard. Um, you do want it to be pretty taut so that you can be pr very productive and thorough during the search. You need some type of way to anchor it down. All I use is just extra dive weights that I've got laid around. Uh, three to four or five pounds is going to work plenty. Um, something that's just going to keep that rope weighted down. The current's not going to pick it up and drift it, but a good weight's going to be uh, consistent for that. You need some type of uh, reference line to the surface, and there's several ways to do this. You can either use your basic cave, rec reel, uh, finger spool, whatever you want to use. They work really well. And then to mark the surface search area as well, I use two different things. Of course, I use a basic SMB, and then the other side, I'm going to use a dive flag itself, and that's just simply based off legal requirements of where we dive a lot. Uh, so it kind of looks like this. If I got the surface of the water here, I'm down to the depth I'm searching. I have my jack stay actually set up basically the length of rope with the two anchor points. I have my reels going up and I'm either going to use an SMB or a surface float with a dive flag. So that's kind of what it would look like. Now, how do you actually do an effective search? It takes two divers to do it effectively. I will briefly talk about how to do it with one divers, but each diver is going to start at opposite ends of the rope. And let's say we got a right and left hand side. On the right side, this diver is going to swim the length of the rope up, if you will. On the left side, this diver is going to swim the length of the rope down and the, they can effectively search a a consistent area based off their visibility, of course. And then once they get to the ends of the, uh, the opposite ends that they started from, they have two options. Option number one, of course, is to move the rope to a different search area and do the same thing. One thing that I like to do, though, is as these two divers are crossing like this, once they get to the opposite ends, I'll actually have them spin around and search over the top of the other divers search pattern or search area, if you will, simply because that gives two sets of eyes for the same search area. And they, once they're done with that, they're always going to start back where they initially started from to begin with. So after that, they can simply move and then repeat that search pattern. As they search the flat area and they start up the incline, that jack stay is going to work very well. It's not going to jeopardize their body for decompression sickness or anything like that. And so the jack stay is a good, easy way to do it. Now, if you don't want to go out and buy a jack stay uh, kit, get you a predetermined length of rope, a couple extra dive weights, just tie it to the ends, two different reel systems, uh, and they can be the same. You can use two finger spools, two rec reels, whatever. And then, of course, you want two different types of surface floats. If you're in an area, say you're searching a pond or an area that's not highly populized, if you will, or if it's not a public boating area where you're not required to have a flag, just use two SMBs. Me, personally, I use an SMB, and, of course, I use a dive flag as well. Now, how do I do it for a single diver scenario? That's very simple to explain. Basically, I search one length of the rope, 
go to the other side, search the other length of the rope, and then of course I will move them consistently. So if I move this one based off my search area and my visibility, I may only move it an arm's length. So if I'm over here on this point and my right hand's here, I will pick it up and move it as far as I can to reach out with my left hand, set it down. And then I'll swim over to the other side and do the same thing. And I can do a very thorough and conductive search or productive search, if you will, by myself. Now, I would not suggest doing that unless you are solo diver trained and you have the proper equipment and experience to do that. But you can do a thorough search, both two divers and one diver search scenario with a jack stay anytime that you're working on an incline. So now let's take a quick look at a circle search and I'll show you just how easy it is to set it up. And we'll talk a little bit about different ropes, reels, stuff like that to do it, whether you're in a two diver scenario or a single diver scenario. All right, guys, so the circle search or the sweep search, if you will, is probably one of the easiest methods for both a single diver and a two diver search scenario. We're going to talk more on the uh, two diver scenario, and then towards the end of the video, I'll give you some points on how to do it with a single diver if you're close enough to shore or you have some type of reference point to do it. But basically, what is the circle search or sweep? You're going to have two divers here. One's going to be a pivot diver, so basically he is not going to move. He's going to stay in the exact same spot. He's going to run a length of either rope or reel. Now, me personally, I like to use reels here instead of ropes. They're a little bit easier to handle underwater. They're less of an entanglement hazard than what a rope is and a lot easier to control. And so as the second diver swims out that predetermined length, let's say it's a five foot section, he can either effectively sweep back and forth, if you will, from the search diver, or he can make a complete rotation, a 360 degree rotation, simply by keeping that line taut and swimming a circle pattern all the way around the pivot diver. And then once he have reached his destination, whether it's just a simple sweep or a circle all the way around, he can get signaled by this diver who is controlling the search, if you will, the pivot man, to take out an extra length of rope, whether it's 5 foot, 10 foot, 15 foot. Once again, that's going to be determined on your visibility, the size of the object that you're searching for, and a few other variables. And then, of course, you can do the same thing. You can either sweep back and forth, or you can do another complete rotation. Now, what's going to determine on whether or not you're sweeping back and forth? Let's say that you're in an area here where your entire search area is nice and level. It's flat. There's no inclines. I would actually start my search based off where my reference line from the surface, which is usually going to be your anchor line or something like that. And then let's say that you need to search that entire area. A circle is going to be great for that. You can either do it your furthest distance first or, and then gradually work in, or you can start at the closest and gradually work out. Whatever works for you is going to be fine. This, of course, being if there's no debris there. If there's debris, it's going to get caught up in the line. You're not going to be able to signal back and forth on the line or anything like that. So if it's a good open area, there's not a lot of debris, you can either start in and work your way out or start out and work your way in. So when would I do a sweep versus a circle? Well, it really depends. Let's say that this is a shore-based search and you're searching a wall. You're not necessarily on an incline searching, but you're actually on a vertical wall here. And so what I would do at that point, I would put the search diver directly at the wall or say our pivot man here directly at the wall right here. And this is still our search area, but the, the pivot diver is going to stay still but the search diver is just going to go back and forth, back and forth. And so you could still search. Try to think this is not vertically in a water column, but horizontally. He can search all the way across this section and leave the pivot man here at the wall. So the sweep search or the circle search is going to work great anytime that you're not dealing with an incline scenario. But the circle search is very simple. You can use a basic rope for that as well. I wouldn't prefer that method. I actually either prefer using a reel. Now, if you use a rope to be consistent on depth, it's very simple to do. I would probably, you know, based off our visibility here, I'm going to do five foot increments. So I'm going to come out five foot. I'm going to simply tie a knot in the rope. And that's going to let the uh, either the pivot man or the diver know that he has reached five foot. And then I'm going to go out another five foot. I'm going to tie another knot. And that is going to let me know that I'm in a 10 foot uh, setting. If you're in clear visibility, of course, you can mark your rope. But, you know, whatever your distance is going to be, simply tie a knot. That's the easiest way to do it. And then usually what I would do is at the end of the rope, 
wherever the diver's searching, he's just going to have a loop that he's holding on. The pivot man who's letting the rope out can actually count and say, okay, there's five, there's 10, there's 15, there's 20, or whatever your distance is. And he can effectively uh, control either the sweep pattern or the circle search simply based off how many knots he's got. This is simple, guys. This is what we use in real life. We don't make it too difficult because we don't want it to be too difficult underwater. So knots and ropes work very well. Now, if you're using a reel system, a couple things that I've done in the past is actually mark the reel system with some type of uh, permanent marker, uh, or you can even use tape. Just wrap you a little a small section of tape to kind of let you know where you're at. If you do tape, you can actually write on the tape the distance, so that's an easy thing. Uh, arm lengths. Let's talk a little bit about if you're doing it by yourself. You are going to need some type of solid anchor system or reference line. And for reference line, all I do is basically set up a reel and weight system. I do this a lot off docks. So if I'm searching off a dock, basically I'm going to drop in my reference line, which is nothing more than a reel and a weight. So here's my weight, here's my reel. Now that's going to be completely separate from what I use to conduct the search, which would actually connect here via swivel system, and then I can search around that area based off that reference line there. So it's real easy once again to set up. You can use a rope, you can use a reel, you can use your anchor line. Anchor lines work great for off the boat because they're going to be consistent. They're not going to change. That anchor will not move once it's down there, so you're always going to have that reference point to come back to. And then let's say that that is an anchor line. All you got to do is simply hook your reel up to the anchor line, do a circle around, let out a lint, do a circle around. Be careful. What I like to do is actually set up a swivel system on the anchor because as I'm turning, unless you're starting at your furthest distance first and gradually getting a shorter distance, that rope as you're spinning around is going to constantly wrap around that. And, and you think you're letting rope out, but you're actually pulling yourself in. So if you're going to start at your feathers distance and come in, that'll work fine. If not, simply put a swivel system on. And how do you know that if you're doing this by yourself and, and you don't have somebody to signal when you've searched a certain area, how do you know that you always are in the, in the right spot to lengthen the rope? Simply use your compass. If you're starting out, let's say I'm facing north, starting out, and then I'll be swimming to the west, and then south, and then east. Once I'm facing north again via my compass, I know that I've made a 360 degree turn. And then I'll let rope out and I'll do the same thing. I'm facing north again, so forth and so on. So we can effectively do a circle search or a sweep search with two divers or one diver simply by gauging it with our compass or even natural navigation. If I'm always going to come back to that one single reference point, I know what's down there on the bottom. I know what the contour is like. I can use natural uh, navigation, if you will, natural reference points to effectively do that search. So guys, that's how I do a circle search with both two divers or a single diver scenario. It works very well if you're on a flat bottom and there's not much debris. Let's briefly talk about debris and how I do a U-shape or a navigational search using that debris. Now in this scenario, I'm not really going to be using ropes, so to speak, but I still need some way to judge distance and I'll talk a little bit about how I do that. So let me redo this here and I'll show you how I do a U-shape pattern or a navigational pattern and just how easy it is to do with two divers and a single diver. All right, guys, so the next situation we're going to look at, of course, is the U-shape pattern or navigational pattern. And there's several things that you're going to have to have with this. First of all, you're going to need some way to navigate, and a, a compass is the first and foremost thing that you'd want. Um, you're going to need to know the size of your search area, not just depth, but the actual size of it as well, because you're either going to be doing time swims or you're going to be doing kick cycles to do this. And if you're doing this by yourself, it, there's a lot of different things you're going to have to remember. You're going to have to remember navigational headings. You're going to have to remember how many times you kick. If you're dealing with the current, uh, there's so many different things. So if you're doing this with two divers, it's a lot safer and a whole lot easier to do. One diver, of course, is going to be the search diver. The other diver is going to be the navigational diver. Now, let's say this is my search area here. I'm going to start down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And I always want to be, uh, or I always want to know where north is. And it doesn't really matter where it's at. I just need to know it for navigational purposes. Because when I set up my compass, I'm going to be running just basically a straight out line. Once I've uh, searched that line or that part of the search area, then I'm going to move over and then run a reciprocal back once I've reached the same distance as my reciprocal, and then I'm going to do it 
constantly back and forth until I've searched the whole area. And I typically end up in the opposite uh, corner than where I, I started at. Uh, of course, you can end up here as well, but you're just going to search back and forth simply using reciprocal navigation skills that you learn in your open water class until you've got that whole area to search. Now, the benefit to this is, is we don't have ropes to deal with. We're not dealing with entanglement hazards. Um, being consistent, the compass is not going to lie. As long as you hold it level, it's going to, you know, work for you. Let's say that I run into a piece of debris. And let's say my debris is right here. Well, since I'm not dealing with a rope, I can either go around it or up and over it. It's very simple to search. This is probably one of the easiest search patterns if you are searching by yourself, even when in a debris field. If it's a nice flat contoured bottom, this is a very easy way to do it. Now, either time swims or kick cycles, that's going to be up to you how you do it. I use different depending on uh, if I'm dealing in a current. Uh, time swims are pretty consistent. If you always swim for a minute in one direction, you're probably going to swim for a minute in the other direction as long as you're using the same kick pattern. Um, um, if you change kick patterns, I wouldn't do that. I would suggest using one kick pattern, maybe the flutter kick or the frog kick, and always do the same. If you do 10 kick cycles up, you're going to do 10 kick cycles back. As far as your horizontal distance that you move over, that's of course going to be based off visibility and the size of the object. If you're looking for a car, I don't need to move one or two feet. I need to move five, ten feet. Um, if I'm looking for a pair of sunglasses or something like that, of course, one or two foot is going to work based off my visibility as well. But this is a great way to search very methodically and, and very productively, whether it's a two diver situation or a single diver. It is a lot easier with two divers. One can focus on navigation while the other one's focused on searching. Um, but this is a good, solid way to search a large area if you don't have ropes or you don't have a way to set up that you can simply use your compass skills to do it, and, and any compass out there is going to work, guys. As long as you hold them level, the compasses are going to work. Um, I probably would not do this more than, say, a 25 to a 50-foot area. So I'd search 25 feet up, maybe 5 to 10 foot across, and then 25 foot back down and on my reciprocal, move 5 to 10 foot. And you want to stay consistent. And depending on how large your search area is, uh, that does determine how easy this search is going to be and how long it's going to take you to search it. But that is basically the U-shape pattern. All I'm doing is just making the letter U, whether I'm going up or down, and I'm using navigation to do it as well. Um, as far as reference points, if you know the area, you have those natural reference points, it's very easy to do this search methodically and, and be very productive at it. So now let's kind of recap. Let's look at some of the tools that I use. I will give you a couple extra pointers here or there, but let's kind of recap everything that we've talked about. And then hopefully this will help you make your underwater search and recovery a lot more productive. So guys, just as a quick recap, the three search patterns that I use based off what my bottom composition and bottom contour is, the jack stay for any type of incline, the sweep or circle search for a good flat bottom with no debris or the navigational U-shape pattern, that works very good if I do or if I am searching in a debris field, that pattern works very well for me. Once again, what do I use? Basic rope, right? You can buy a jack stay system or you can make it. Basic rope, some weights, something to anchor them down, and then you need some type of real system. Okay, you need a buoy system, whether it's your basic SMB that you buy when you first buy your gear, uh, and a dive flag, of course, if you're searching in a public area that's open for boating purposes, those work very well. If I'm doing a single or two diver uh, search scenario on an incline jack stay, single or two diver uh, search situation in an open non-debris field, if you will, or open contour, the circle or the sweep search, and then of course a single or two diver search scenario with a compass anytime that I'm dealing with a larger area or there's debris that I'm going to have to navigate. Now let's talk a little bit briefly about the expanding square. This is another one that's taught in most classes, most search and recovery classes. That works well too. Um, I prefer the U-shape pattern just because it's a little bit easier to navigate around something and to get back on that consistent line because I'm just doing straight lines. I'm, I'm going up or down, getting a reciprocal, coming back. 
reciprocal coming back, reciprocal coming back versus trying to keep that expanding square, trying to remember how many, okay, I kicked 10 times here, now I need to kick 11 to make that expanding square. It's a lot simpler for me just to do this over the expanding square. But Melvin, very good question. I appreciate you writing in or you know commenting on it. Guys, if you got any more comments or questions, simply put them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your questions the best I can and as quickly as I can. If it's something that we need to make a video on, I'll do everything within my ability to make a video for you. But if you like this video, simply hit the like button. It's very easy to do. Look, psh, I just did it for you. Hit it, hit the like button for me. It lets me know that you do like our content. You do want to see more content like this in the future. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.